in. We've called this emergency meeting because Boober Fraggle is fed up to here. <gasps> Hey, look, if people want to give credit to the Simpsons for predicting things, they can also give credit to the idea that Fraggle Rock ended the Cold War. That's right, this was during the mid-80s when puppeteer Jim Henson was on a trip to Moscow. There, the Dark Crystal and Labyrinth were big hits at film festivals, while the Henson brand was already massive. This region wanted more puppetry, so Jim was able to license out the TV rights to one of his more recent shows at the time, 1983's Fraggle Rock. That's where the pilgrims landed. Dance your kids away! This American slash Canadian series about a civilization of singing underground creatures was going to air within the Soviet Union. Sure, TV shows airing in other countries is normal, but the big deal about this was is this was the first American slash Canadian TV show to be broadcasted there. During the Cold War, when everyone was waiting for bombs to drop, having entertainment from a rival faction was not exactly a thing audiences were yearning for. Yet here was Fraggle, ready to break into that comfort zone until we were all uncomfortable and confused. The series made its Soviet debut, and ten months later, the Berlin Wall fell. No more did the Iron Curtain divide Europe. And it was all thanks to the Fraggles. But how does this correlate? Why do people, mostly jokingly, refer to this series as the show that ended the Cold War? Well, we're about to find out in this Patreon voted video chosen by R. Walterson. Honestly, wish they requested Dark Crystal since that has less episodes and is way cooler. But anyway, cue the intro. It's Juice and Jam time. Worries for another day. Our story takes us to 1981, when The Muppet Show was coming to an end. To follow it up, Jim Henson wanted to make something even bigger. A show that would, quote, change the world and end the war. It needed to be about peace and understanding, and that's what this new series was. Fraggle Rock. With the popularity of the Muppet brand, HBO picked up the series without even a pilot to test the waters. This was to be the first original weekly series from HBO back when they were a much smaller channel, and it was given tons of creative freedom that network television didn't offer. Yeah, before The Sopranos and Game of Thrones, it all started with the Fraggles. Fraggles naturally have physical prowess and a dance-like grace. Oh, oh. oh, hi, man. Gobo! Gobo! Did Red fall this way? Oh. Yeah, Wemby, sort of that way. This is in a genre I personally refer to as a Smurf-like, essentially a piece of media where it's a whole civilization of similarly designed creatures with nearly the same bodies, but with interchangeable clothing. The Fraggles are these underground creatures living a near-carefree life, singing and exploring each episode. The main five we follow are Gobo, the one who seeks adventure, Red, the spunky one, Boober, the most neutral by the books character, but I personally identify with Wembley being the most worried of them all. Okay, you ready, Wembley? Ready. All right, here we go! <laughs> this will make you feel better. But I just love Moki, this sort of artsy hippie girl. Like, every time she speaks, I get reminded of that blonde girl, Posey, from Mission Hill. A job is one of the really great things a Fraggle gets to do. Yeah, but do you really enjoy your 30-minute work week? Oh, yes. Why, sometimes I put in two, maybe three minutes of overtime, just for fun. I hate all of you. But the Fraggles are not alone down here as they coexist with the Doozers, these little animatronics who mainly build stuff for the sake of it, and that's all they do, build while the Fraggles play. For now, at least. Let my Doozers go. 
This show is about the Fraggles, but honestly, I'm kind of more fascinated by the Doozers. While sometimes they appear as traditional Muppets, they're often portrayed as remote-controlled animatronics. Behind the scenes, you got one guy driving them around in an RC car, and another essentially controlling their head and mouth movements. I did not realize people were motion-capturing hand movements and transferring that into a robot puppet's head. That implies Doozer technology is cyberpunk. <laughs> Sleeping in your home. Yes, we do, yes, we do, yes, we really do. Look, man, I'm not very knowledgeable on Muppets. A lot of this is new to me. So there's a lot more to this world than these two races coexisting underground. As you can tell by this traced over Ghosts and Goblins map, there's two other worlds, one of which being the land of the Gorgs, where these massive HR puff and stuff looking creatures live and assume they're the center of it all. This is what fursuits in the 70s and 80s were like, kids. We gotta bring it back. Whoa! Yeah, the Gorgs were pretty hard to cast in this show, considering Jim's long history of trophy hunting them for sport. <laughs> With their size, they considered the Fraggles nothing more than pests. From the start, Gorgs seemed like they'd be the antagonists of the show, but they're not the mindless buffoons you'd think they'd be. Much of the bad they do is from misunderstandings, but more on that soon. Bye bye I finally caught a Fraggle! <laughs> Oh, it's a disgusting little thing. You don't know where it's been. I've been a lot nicer places in here. So the third and final section of the world is what the Fraggles consider the silly creatures of outer space. Well, I wonder what kind of stupid looking aliens the Henson Company came up with to represent said silly creatures. Goodness, outer space seems to be uninhabited. Oh. Hey, wait a minute. The silly creatures are just humans above ground. <laughs> <laughs> so we basically live in what the Fraggles consider outer space. Dang, they're gonna have their minds blown when they discover NASA. For the most part, outer space focuses on this inventor and his dog who are ignorant to the existence of Fraggles, yet their actions will either parallel or interfere with the other regions. It's all sort of a butterfly effect. Oh look, the water's disappearing! Yeah, why does it disappear every day? Why does daddy take a bath every day? So with these three worlds, you sort of had this indirect symbiotic relationship. Regardless of their intent or if they keep to themselves or not, they all had this way of affecting each other. There's no black and white good versus evil on the show. Much of the conflicts here happen because of misunderstandings or ignorance. They all need to work past not seeing eye to eye, literally. Each of the races were purposely designed to be a different height for a reason. There's antagonists here that do bad things simply because it's in their nature as creatures. Even when there's more conventionally evil characters, they still have a sort of lawful evil code. To defeat Beat them means both sides must compromise and work together, but they still acknowledge one side is in the wrong. Time to get angry and say, well, do you want it? No, get out of my way! Well, do you need it? No, just take it away! Well, do you want it? No, but I let for today! Now, if you want to talk my favorite episode and song, well, that's Season 3, Episode 9, The Mean Genie, about this pot of greed looking genie pissed about being contained for years. He's got this aggressive villain song with such wicked visuals. I'm disappointed he only showed up once. Well, twice if you count the Marvel published Fraggle comic, which was just a retelling of the episode. Yeah, back when the home video market wasn't so big, novelizations or comic book retellings like this were more common. But anyway, peace and unity. Oh. I just thought that when a fraggle lets a genie out of a bottle, he gets wishes, doesn't he? Well, yes and no. What does that mean? Used to be yes, now it's no. Oh. This Unity theme is carried over in its international broadcast, as some territories reshot the outer space human segments with their own actors. Germany shot for shot remade the same segments in their own language, while France changed the setting and characters to a chef in a bakery, and the UK had a retired sailor living in a lighthouse. <laughs> This was a way to get people from around the globe to help in on the show. Looking at the production, Fraggle Rock was created at the right place and right time with a standard you could maybe never recreate. The Henson name was massive, so HBO gave them total freedom and at no point did the script ever receive a note from the executives. Plus, being filmed in Canada meant the government helped in the funding. But should they go behind schedule or need more money, Jim Henson put his own cash into the series. I couldn't help wondering if Miss Piggy was jealous she didn't get a show of her own. Yes. 
While his name is attached, Jim himself only voiced a few characters and directed some episodes. He wasn't really involved in the show as he was busy making films like The Dark Crystal or Muppets Take Manhattan. What really made Fraggle Rock is the crew he entrusted, from Boober, Traveling Matt, and Gonzo's performer Dave Goel, to Jocelyn Stevenson, the Fraggle co-creator. Many will unanimously say Fraggle Rock was the best work experience of their careers. It was even some of the crew's first TV jobs they had to learn on the fly, yet Jim saw something in their previous work that would benefit the show. One of those newbies were amongst the most memorable parts of Fraggle Rock, the musicians. Well, when I'm Wimbledon West, I take the friend I like best, so we can Wimble, Wimble, Wimble side by side. When scouting through audition tapes, the crew weren't looking for children's songs since they never felt they were making a show for children. They made it for themselves. What they really wanted were Fraggle songs. So the composers chosen were Philip Balsam and Dennis Lee, known for children's books and poetry. They made music for fun and never even submitted an audition tape themselves. An executive for the Canadian channel CBC just found their recordings. They did not even want the job, but writer Jerry Jewell convinced them that their sound of wisdom and innocence was right for the role. And so, they composed often multiple songs per episode. Episode. All 96 episodes. Flat out, these are pretty catchy and come in all sorts of styles. Even the theme song made it to number 33 in the British pop charts. That's how big of a deal music was in this series. Singing and exploring was the theme, which I forgot to mention in another frequent segment. While the Fraggles hide away underground, one chooses to explore outer space. Traveling Matt, named after what blue screen technology was referred to back then. Matt will often send postcards about his adventures, like this place. Which looks like... it smells like... Oh no! It's in these fish out of water segments where Matt tries to understand the surface level, and yes, they were reshot in other countries too. That is so much extra work, they could have easily have dubbed this over. They put round things into spots, and then they push a lot of buttons. But then... Oh, ah, the fun seems to be over. I don't know why the creatures do it. Just looking at them, you can tell they aren't having a good time. Why are they doing it if it's not fun? They look to be having less fun than doozers. <laughs> Love, your uncle, Traveling Matt. Traveling Matt tells you to get good. Dang, nice to see this show is still relevant today. What you just saw was the start of Traveling Matt's competitive gaming career. <laughs> At one point, Henson wanted to give Matt his own spin-off where he travels the world on a hot air balloon with other fraggles and doozers. Kinda sounds like Postcards from Buster, the Arthur spin-off. Too bad Matt's show never happened, but hey, I'd be down if they made that series today, or at least more public appearances. You're intelligent and he's an idiot. That's right, and that too. Are you gonna put up with that? Well, oh, I guess you like being called an idiot. I can food. take a compliment gracefully. So I'll call you a moron. Well, thank you very much. And in that's, the meantime, that's right. You have Good Lord. He's got a lot to learn, doesn't he, Cotterpen? Yeah, but I wouldn't bother. I just wouldn't bother. Well, well, what is that little doozer's problem? Anyway, we'll be back with discussing the love and compassion Fraggles teach us after these messages. Excuse me, that's my line. Oh, I'm I? sorry. <clears throat> but first, <clears throat> this is today on NBC. On NBC. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Did I do something wrong? Yeah, thank you. Do that again. Oh. Thank you. Thank Jim Henson, Fraggle Rock will return after these messages. Guess who? The sponsor of tonight's video, Manscaped, also worked on Female Sexes 2. We got the Perfect Package 3.0 kit. What's in here? The Lawnmower 3.0. You know what this does. I don't need to tell you. It's super safe too. No nicks, no snags guaranteed. Trust me. USB charger, yeah. Get 20% off plus free international shipping with the code TAXI at manscaped.com. Also, the Perfect Package Essentials Kit includes all this water resistance, high performance body trimmers, and liquid products. Keep yourself fresh with this home slice. With the Peak Hygiene Plan, you get quarterly replenishments on products and replacement blades delivered to your door. Again, 20% off plus free international shipping with the code taxi at manscaped.com. Your balls will thank you, and so will I. And also this box, apparently. Manscaped. <laughs>
So, of course, you'd expect this show to teach lessons about getting along and understanding or whatever my divorce lawyer tells me, but there were stories that really pushed it. Episodes about the environment, which I don't believe was talked about as much in the 80s. That and very often do the characters learn to cope with death or face their own mortality. Some of these episodes can really hit hard. What do you think it's like to die? I don't know, Red. I don't think anybody does. It's just so blunt. No poetic allegory, just flat out questioning eternity while they're trapped in a cave about to collapse. Episodes like Marooned as well as Gone But Not Forgotten can be a real downer, yet it tells kids not to worry about feeling happier instantly. It's okay to take time to mourn. <sighs> Fraggles will even banter about the very concept, making jokes about death. They're very eager to remind you, they're not immortal and neither are you. But I am. Quantum Immortality. I'm the main character of this story. You're all just background characters in my show. And once the show ends, I'm going to be rebooted and remade for centuries. Fraggle Rock even had more political episodes, ones that would denounce the idea of being ruled by others through monarchies and dictatorships. They believe one ruler can't be beneficial to all, and we should worry for each other, ourselves. We also have no great and wondrous leaders. No uh, great and wondrous leaders? Mm -mm. No, you see, we each lead ourselves, and we all lead each other. No gods, no kings, only Fraggle. But to uh, lighten the mood, let me tell you about my 2019 trip. While at Momocon 2019, we got to visit the Center for Puppetry in Atlanta. You all should visit. I believe their exhibits are on rotation, so by the time we went, they had all this Dark Crystal stuff. Some old and some new for the Netflix series. I just love these massive beetle suits, which I can confirm inspired those drones from Samurai Jack. But yeah, this place has some good B-roll for this video. Anyway, back to Fraggle Rock, only on The Hub. Remember that channel? You're watching The Hub's Fraggle! Oh, hey, Red, I just got a postcard for my Uncle Traveling Matt. Well, he can't be having an adventure more exciting than this. Oh, wow. He says he's in a place called Equestria. Mm. According to Michael Frith, Vice President and Creative Director of Jim Henson Productions, Fraggle Rock was envisioned to be a multi-layered, complex universe that would resonate in any medium. Comics, specials, a CG preschool show about the Doozers, a film that's been in development heck since 2005, a 2020 series of shorts called Rock On, shot during quarantine, Oh, and a crossover with the R-rated action film, Boondock Saints. Yeah, because the silly creature Doc is played by actor Gerard Parks, who plays a bartender also named Doc in Boondock Saints. By Spy Kids Machete Logic, they're connected. Well, you know what they say. People in glass houses sink sh ships. <laughs> There was also Fraggle Rock, the animated series released the same year the live action show ended in 1987. This was a cartoon, which means we can actually see their legs. It's a lot more adventurous and slapsticky than the more dialogue based original show, so it doesn't quite feel the same. It feels like a typical cartoon from the era. Kinda makes me appreciate the puppet show even more, which thinking back to, the writing style may have influenced a lot of cartoons way later. Something about that sense of humor gives me those vibes. Work is an enriching experience. Yeah! yeah. Tedium and drudgery are good for the soul. Boober. Fraggle fans consider the animated series a downgrade, but according to TV producer Mark Loesch, it was doing well in the ratings, but canceled after an executive's daughter said she did not like the show. His little girl did not like Fraggle Rock. And so when the children's programs department wanted to renew the show, he didn't give the green light to it. Wow, all because one girl did not like the show, an entire series and its crew were all out of the job and I assume executed on site. <laughs> but to end the video off, allow me to explain how the original Fraggle Rock ended. There's a story going round that Fraggle's over now. There's a story going round, the show is through. But we're here to tell the truth about it anyhow. That we'll live as long as silly creatures do. After 96 episodes, the crew themselves chose to end the show when it was at its most popular to prevent burnout. It's in the final three episodes where the Fraggles made peace with the Gorgs and for the first time, the silly creatures that they've been living next to discover Fraggles in such a melancholy finale. Who are you? You mean, you can see me? Can't I? I felt bad for you. That's how you touched me. Then I touched you. 
You're not just a silly creature. You're a you, aren't you? I hope they realize they gotta pitch in rent money now. The finale aired in 1987, and for one last celebration, the crew had a dinner together. While there, they played essentially an exclusive episode made for themselves that would explain where the Fraggles will go after cancellation. Okay, maybe not there. But you know, you could use a straight man. You know, somebody with great timing who could what? Huh? Boober. Boober Fraggle. I'm the one with the cap over his eyes! Oh! I'm glad I saw him, even if it was only for a little bit. Mm. I don't know why, but seeing a fraggle was important. Magic, magic be with you each morning, each evening too, for the magic. But we're friends, and we had lots of fun too. You sure did. It was fun while it lasted. All the good times, and the songs, and the laughs and stuff. It's not important now. Everything is important. Either that or nothing is. I prefer the former. Well, you'll be alone. Yeah. And I'll be alone. Uh -huh. Well, and we'll be alone together. We each lead ourselves, and we all lead each other. Will it hold? How should I know, Felix? All we can do is our best. Rock! 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 Makes me wonder about the mysteries of life. We're, we're all a part of everything, and, and everything's a part of us. Even you. Magic we cannot leave the magic. Don't you care the way? Worries for another day. Let the music play. Fraggle Rock was a series about unity and was created with a vision to end the war. It coincidentally being the first American TV show to air in the Soviet Union months before the wall fell was some crazy miracle. While Jim Henson didn't work on it much, he managed to find the right people for the job. Like Muppeteer Dave Gold said, He gathered all sorts of people, in each of whom he saw something special. His company was like Noah's Ark, loaded to the gunwales with all types, including some natural enemies. During our voyage, all these different people worked together, and in so doing, even the natural enemies came to respect and love each other. That's what is so special about Jim, and the philosophy of celebrating diversity underlies everything we've done. I think our audience senses that, and it means a lot to them as well. It's a vision of a better world. Down at Fraggle Rock. Oh. McDonald's presents... <laughs> Great news, Fraggles! Greater than a one Fraggle ping pong game? Greater than laundry? Tell me, Gobo. No, let me guess. No, tell me! Ah! It says... Kids get one of four Fraggle Rock toys when their parents buy them a McDonald's Happy Meal featuring Jim Henson's Fraggle Rock. There's Red Fraggle in a radish, Gobo in a carrot, Moki in an eggplant, or Boober and Wembley in a pickle. I think I'll capture that news in something arty. But first, let's party! Hooray! I love picnics with everything from pepperoni to macaroni. 